welcome from the Manhattan Beach Community Church, an interfaith and interdenominational church at the crossroads of life. We bring you portions of the Sunday morning service from our beautiful sanctuary at 303 South Peck Avenue in the community of Manhattan Beach. We are glad you are joining us for this special service, and we hope it will be a source of inspiration and direction for you in the days ahead. We also invite you to join us in person this coming Sunday morning or any Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. For more information about the church and its wide-ranging programs, please feel free to contact the church office at 310-372-3587. And now, our Sunday morning service. Lord, as we begin this period of worship, we ask that you look upon us with favor, for we come to praise you and as well to receive the comfort of your care and concern for us and for the uncertain world in which we live. Open up our hearts and spirits so that we may more keenly sense your presence in our midst this day. Allow us to understand and appreciate more fully that this time of worship is a time for renewal, an opportunity to rise above our doubts and fears, a chance to experience a revival of our hopes and dreams, and to reconfirm our faith. Let us pray. Lord, we see your hand at work in the world, in the power of the rain, in the beauty of a sunset, in the crisp sparkle of a fresh spring morning in the faces of those we love and who love us, in the wondrous way people can transcend the problems of their everyday lives and come to a lovely sanctuary such as this for the eternal truths. And as we try to come to terms with life, to better understand ourselves and our relationship with you, we need to know that you are here, aware of our hopes and concerns, an ever-present source of inspiration and renewal. Lord, we are grateful for the opportunity that you've given us to lead more effective and productive lives and to do so with an increased measure of perspective, an undiscourageable spirit of goodwill, and with greater wisdom, courage, and faith. All of this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
For some reason, my voice 
is not used to clear air and beautiful clear skies. And so I needed to add some water to the program here this morning. Those of you that follow the Lakers, the Dodgers, and the Angels have been subjected now over a fairly long period of time to a particular commercial that airs both on radio and television. The central figure in this commercial is referred to as the most interesting man in the world. The most interesting man in the world. This individual, as portrayed in the commercial, is the rugged individualist type. He's probably 60 years of age, is a fairly well-built individual. He has kind of a spiked hairdo, and he looks like he's spent too much time under a sun lamp. He also has some other qualities that are worth mentioning. He is debonair. He is always surrounded by a bevy of younger women. He is a raconteur, as we would say. He is a sword fighter and a surfer and an, an amateur astronaut as well. He is the daredevil supreme. His exploits and his achievements know no bounds. First of all, according to the commercial, the most interesting man in the world is someone whose birth was prophesied by the Mayans. How interesting. He once taught a dog to bark in Spanish. <laughs> he serves fajitas with his sizzling fajitas with his bare hands. Bulls refuse to fight him. He once had an awkward moment just to see what it was like. His reputation is expanding faster than the universe. And the one I like best is, he lives vicariously through himself. <laughs> the tagline of the commercial always happens when he's at a table surrounded by beautiful young women and something to drink, and he's saying, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I drink double brand X. So much for the coffee hour, right? And then his final moment of glory for the most interesting man in the world is stay thirsty, my friend. All in all, this gentleman is as useful as a screen door on a submarine. <laughs> He's as useful as a refrigerator on the top of Mount Everest, or a windmill on your washing machine. You can take your pick. The most interesting man in the world. How interesting. Reminds me of Oscar Wilde, the great author who said, whenever I travel, I always carry a copy of my diary so I'll have something fanc 
fanciful and interesting to read. Interesting and fascinating kind of go together and are two qualities. But it seems to me more important than interesting and fascinating would be the quality of significance and importance. Contrast those two for a moment. A person who's living for the aggrandizement of themselves or a person who lives for others. There is quite a contrast in that. And we live in a rather bizarre and a rather celebrity-driven society where people are pretty much presidents of their own fan club. I was thrilled the other day, for instance, to see that Michael Jackson is making a comeback. Just thrilled to tears. <laughs> What's that old song that comes out of some of your backgrounds? Indulge yourself, it's later than you think. Well, we've seen what kind of activity occurs when people indulge themselves. I love that phrase that came to me from an old friend who described two very wealthy sisters who never had to work as living lives of wretched excess. And look at where wretched excess got America. Not in a very good place, I would say. Greed is a wonderful thing. I tend to gravitate to historical and everyday people of goodness and greatness. People who are worthwhile. People who make a positive difference in our lives. Whether it's back into the historical archives or whether it's here and now. I like people who make this world a better place. I don't care if they're interesting and fascinating particularly, though they're fun to look at. I mean, Houdini and Charlie Chaplin and the gang, all of them uh, brought some joy into people's lives. But they are fascinating characters and people you would probably have trouble with if you invited them to dinner tonight and tried to start a conversation in a normal sense of the word. It is revealing to me that the most famous person who ever lived was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman, he worked in a carpentry shop until he was 30. And then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. When the tide of popular opinion turned against him, his friends ran away. He was turned over to his enemies. He was tried and convicted. He was nailed upon a cross between two thieves. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never owned a home. He never went to college. He never traveled more than 200 miles from the place he was born. He never did one of the things that usually accompanies greatness. And yet all the armies who ever marched and all the governments that ever sat and all the kings that ever reigned have not affected life upon this earth as powerfully 
as that one solitary man. Jesus of Nazareth was interesting. He was fascinating. But he was also significant and important, just as you are significant and important in the world in which you live. And if you have to make a choice, be significant and be important rather than just interesting, bizarre, and fascinating. Remember the first time I saw a young man with purple hair sitting on a fence that led into the schoolyard over there in a spike condition years ago, practically drove off the road. They called him the Lavender Alert. He was ahead of his time. Unfortunately, he looks like a lot of people that are making a lot of money today doing nothing. Really. No, it was Jesus that said, Let your light so shine before all that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Interestingly enough, in the bulletin, they added the word life. Let your life so shine. So that's as good as your light because... There is a light within each of you, and that's the best part of you. And if you let that light shine into all the corners of the circle of your acquaintance, the world is a better place for it if you shine a light of goodness and greatness, a light that makes the world a better place. No, interesting and fascinating is one thing, Significant and important is another. My rather simplified version of life and my criteria for the people like you or who are in the trenches of life is whether or not you are part of the answer in life or part of the problem, part of the answer in life, or part of the problem. You can divide people that way, you know. It's very simple. You can do it in your family. You can do it amongst your friends. You can do it in your church. You can do it in your community. You can do it in the workplace. You can do it in the world. You can do it in the Republic of the United States. Is someone part of the answer to a better life and a better world or part of the problem? Yeah, you can run all your friends through that. You can run all your acquaintances through that. You can run all the people you deal with through that. You can run all the people that make our life better or make it worse through that. Are you part of the answer or are you part of the problem? Each of us has a significant role to play in God's world. Remember that. Each of us are cast into this drama of life like these children. And we have an opportunity to surround greatness or goodness making life better, or we just can be fascinating and interesting and a pain in the tail. Over the years, more often than not, I find my significant heroes sitting right here in front of me in the congregation. Because for each of us, it's everyday life that matters and how things go along. And those of you that I find embracing God's notion 
of let your light so shine before all, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Find a special place of affection and appreciation in my heart and soul. And not to downgrade that wonderful commercial and the most interesting man in the world. But you know something? I think somehow we found the most interesting and significant man in the world 2,000 years ago. Amen. Carry you along this day and evermore.